Morning guys, Buckskin Dave here. Well, the weather's got me shut down. It's pouring rain again. Um, I did have to, <laughs> just so you know, in case it ever happens to you, after I got all that stuff on, that starter and everything on the truck, I ended up replacing all of the battery wires. I replaced the negative cable all the way down and then it went through a thing on the frame and then it went through and was bolted to the, I replaced that. I built that cable and replaced it. And um, the same with the starter, I built a cable. You, you couldn't buy that cable, it was, it had Y's in it and all this stuff. So I just built one of those and put it in. But what happened, I'm glad I did. What happened is <clears throat> down there between where it was attached to the frame and then it was bolted to the motor, um, in between there, it had rubbed on something, and so weather got in underneath the insulation. I peeled that off. It was all blue. I mean, solid powder blue. I doubt any charge was getting through there. So, hopefully, when this weather stops, <clears throat> we'll go start getting some wood. All my projects are outside right now, uh, so I'm working on a pouch. And uh, this one's going to be, well, you can see here going to be halfway between the possible bag and a haversack. Um, what I'm doing here is I believe that a lot of the stuff that was made on the farm, uh, whether it was a belt, a rifle strap, a pouch, or whatever, it was made mostly, it wasn't like we do today. It's like, I'm going to build a pouch, you know? And so... Um, we call up Tandy Leather or Crow or whatever and order all this shit to do this pouch and it's all right there. I think a lot of pouches and stuff were done what was left laying around. I mean like here this is some this was a piece of buffalo that was just big enough to make this pouch and probably a strap for it and there'll be some little pieces but um, so I'm doing this I, I wanted to put D-ring uh, D-rings on the straps but I don't have any D-rings, and I could go buy some, but I'm not gonna. This pouch is gonna be made with scrap that I have laying around here. If I really want a D-ring, I guess I can pound one out on the forge. But the point is, everything here is gonna be from what I have laying around. So, stick with me on this project. The project might be boring, but the coffee's great! <laughs> so. If the weather lets up a little, we'll go out and shoot shoot some too. I've been wanting to shoot a little bit. I haven't shot that almost gemmer yet, so we need to do that. Okay, so I'm kind of putting a saddle stitch on here. I think that's what it's called. You know, two needles go through the leather like that. <clears throat> um, and every, this bottom one, I've got a little bit of fringe because I had some scrap there. So I'm going to put a little fringe there. So that's three pieces of pretty darn thick buffalo hide. It's kind of tough, so I'm using a, an awl. And uh, I got some nails in here. That helped hold the three pieces together. And then as I pull the nails, I just... Uh, run the needles through. Try not to get them tangled on the nails. <laughs> That's so me. I like this stitch. I really have confidence in it. And all you have to do to end it is just go back. Go back a little. I'm using artificial sinew. So, anyway, let me zoom you in. Okay. All right, so I got my nails in here. I guess you could go all the way. I go about 10 nails at a time. Uh, more so, because I've got three pieces here, I'm trying to hold this piece of fringe kind of straight. Take that out. Run it through. It's not like this isn't. It's 
not like a bunch of things could go wrong here but it's kind of a slow process I just really like this stitch oh uh, another thing on this I started this bag out with about a two inch welt you know to make like so it had some thickness to it and start looking at the pieces I have and I think I would have that would have caused me a uh, logistics problem I wouldn't have enough material so this one's just going to be a standard outside the edge stitch man with good tough leather so that's that's how I'm going with it I think it'll be a nice useful bag it'll definitely be strong enough to put this is buffalo hide I mean if I want to make it a snare bag and carry my snares in it um, I'm sure it'll be tough enough to hold anything that that way or I can carry a couple of sandwiches and some survive you know a lot of times when I uh, when I go out in the woods I'm just going out for a couple of hours all I need is some small a small survival kit and a way of making a fire and a couple of sandwiches. I'm about as good with, with a carpenter hammer as I am with this hammer. So. Yeah. They say this fringe used to help wick water away, and I don't doubt that. I'm a little more pragmatic. I it's decorative, sure, but I always figure it's nice to carry a whole bunch of small tie-downs attached to your bag like this. When you need them, you just yank one off. All right. So that's what we're looking at. I know I got a bunch of shit on this counter, but anyway, that's what we're looking at. Got some fringe, the flap. I gotta sew up this side. And then, but before I do that, I'm gonna either, I'm gonna go look for some D-rings right now. If I don't have any in the trap shack, then I'll have to sew right to the inside of here. It'll be easier if I do that before I sew this flap up. And I gotta start thinking of what I'm gonna fasten it with. And uh, anyway, so I am gonna start my line up here. So to do that, you gotta get you one of these. These help you space your stitches so your stitches look uniform and good. And these wheels come in different sizes. You think this one's like seven or eight stitches an inch, which I always think kind of looks just about right. Plus, it's there's enough stitches in there that this thing isn't going to come apart. No matter okay, what you put so in. <laughs> I found some of these. These are like old. These are like probably 60, 70, 80 years old. I had a, uh, a little swivel type setup and had these two hand forged d-rings on it they're just a teensy bit big but 
for this project, they're what I had around. I couldn't find any of those little uh, chrome ones, you know, that you use in your traps and stuff. And now that I think of it, I like this better. Them chrome ones, they stink of new, <laughs> okay? So I got one started here and uh, I'll zoom you in and I'll get these sewed on. Okay, here we go. Anyway, so here's a close up of these rings. There are two of them, they're exactly the same. So I'm just folding over. What's nice about these now is I can put any kind of strap I want on this. And I think I have a hand forged buckle. And I may have enough of this to make a strap. It'll be in pieces, which will also add to the look of using what was available. But anyway, I'm sure you can't hear a word I'm saying because that's hail out there. And uh, Old Spoon and I went and took a look. And, uh, there you are, just for a lot. Yeah, it's like that all the way around. Ha <laughs> You see that little chicken out there? There's a couple of tomato plants that aren't impressed with this. Neither am I. I mean, it's almost the 1st of July, and we've got this crap going on. How are you supposed to grow a garden around here? Anyway, enough complaining. Oh, a little smaller than marble. About double on, a little bit bigger than double on buck. Okay, well I got, got my loop on here for my hat. Those are sewed in. I'm just finishing up this side. But it sounds like it slowed down a little bit in the rain department out there. So uh, I wanted to shoot the gamma a little. And then I got this piece of uh, ballistic material, kind of weird stuff. Got it a long time ago, supposed to catch bullets. See it it went through one of the Let's other see holes. if it'll catch anything. So, instead of pushing the rear sight more this way, I, I'm gonna work with the front sight a little and I got it going the other way. So let's see if that fixes what we got going on here. That looks like that did it. My first three shots were over here. <clears throat> I was putting my sight here with this right in the right on top of the sight. So here's my last shot. So I got the right and left was what I worried about up and down. I can't do nothing with it here. Uh, anyway, it doesn't. This is uh, stuff the is. back sight doesn't go down anymore. This further. thing weighs about 55 pounds. It's uh. A little bit spongy, not too spongy, and uh, it's about two inches thick, 24 by 24. I'm going to set it up over there, and we're going to try a bunch of different stuff and see if we can see how many bullets it'll catch for us. So I'm not going to waste any more ammo on that. That's that's junk. 700 foot per second cowboy bullet just whistled right through it at 10 yards. I ain't gonna. I was gonna shoot a Corbon and see if the 4570 or 4590 go through it. Obviously, they will. So I'm gonna go back to shooting the 90 again at some other stuff. Right. Usually, when that happens, I just quit. All right. Kind of figured out what my aiming point is. All right, all right. I kind of got my aim point down now. All right. Nice. All right, I got it figured now. Oh, that's a good one. They're hitting right in the center of the green now, so. So, I'm going to load some of these up. I'm kind of running low of them. I did make some more lead. I have to get some more SPG lube and lube some more bullets. Load them up and then I can work with this thing for a while. But uh, I got it back to where it was before we tore it down and, and did the, uh, the uh, finish work. So, back to the bag. I want to go back in right. and stitch up that last side. Well, got a little shooting in. So, in review, that ballistic material was counterfeit. 750 gram, uh, 
foot per second cowboy bullet just no sense wasting anything else on it uh, we got the the mini gimmer up to uh, snuff I need to do some loading so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this this is where I'm at on it so I got I just got to go up the side here where I got my deals there and then I'm gonna have to start fiddling around figuring out a patch so anyway thanks for joining me for a cup of coffee we did a little bit at least we did a little bit of shooting in between the rain it's gonna rain again I can see it coming so thanks for stopping in I'll see you next time we'll continue working on this bag and do some more shooting so have a great day bye